Morning everyone, this is my second podcast. Um, it's day 99 since I started as medical director. During this time we've had uh, becoming a highly reliable organisation conference at the Excel Centre. That was a great day. We had over 450 people in the room. He did however concentrate a lot on surgery. Uh, we, will be, we will be having a further uh, conference in September to look at patient safety but this will be open to the, to the whole organisation on a first come first served basis. Uh, of note also we have interviews for the Director of Medical Education, Undergraduate Medical Education and R&D uh, that are coming up in the next two weeks. What I wanted to talk to you about today was three things. First of all consent, secondly uh, medical engagement uh, and the Clinical Director and Clinical Lead Forum and then finally um, a small note about RCA training. All of this will be followed up with a, a email uh, to colleagues uh, in the medical director's bulletin. As we all know, consent is, a, is an important topic for all healthcare professionals. Uh, for the last 30 years, we've been using the Bolam test of whether a doctor's actions would be acceptable to a reasonable body of medical opinion. However, since the uh, landmark case of Montgomery versus Lanarkshire Health Board in 2015, uh, things have moved on. The important Montgomery uh, case has highlighted that um, healthcare professionals need to uh, look at four aspects when uh, consenting patients for procedures or care. The first area is, does the patient know about the material risks of the treatment I'm proposing? Key to this is, what is a material risk? and that is different for each patient depending on their age, occupation uh, and other factors. What one patient uh, deems a significant risk would not be the same for another and that has to be taken into account when discussing these uh, risks. The second issue is does the patient know about reasonable alternatives to this treatment and have I taken reasonable care to ensure that the patient is aware of the alternatives? Next. Do any of the exceptions to my duty of, uh, to disclose apply here? Those exceptions are relatively simple. Is the patient unconscious? Has the patient asked not to be involved in this uh, uh, process? And finally, is the information that I would provide going to cause harm to the patient? And finally, and this is really important, have I clearly documented within the case notes the discussions that have been undertaken during the consent process? For us to become a highly reliable organisation, we need to all to be involved in learning from serious events. It's become clear to me that the number of doctors involved in root cause analysis processes is relatively few. This has been highlighted by NHS improvement as an area of weakness in the organisation. To improve the number of doctors involved in root cause analysis processes, uh, Yvonne Evans from the NHS improvement has uh, set up with the OD team a series of training events which happen on a weekly basis uh, for uh, doctors to be involved in root cause analysis. This will enable uh, more medical staff to chair these important meetings so that we can disseminate the learning wider than we currently are. Information as to how you can book these courses is available below and also on the bulletin and on the intranet. Finally, I'd like to talk about the Clinical Director and Clinical Lead Forum that I've set up. All the clinical directors and clinical leads will have been emailed uh, about a series of meetings uh, at, that happen on a Thursday morning at the end of each month. The next one is on the 29th of June. This is to improve the medical engagement throughout the organisation. The Clinical Director and Clinical Lead Forum will be a two-way forum that will enable the executive and management teams uh, to discuss with clinical colleagues the issues of the day and vice versa so that uh, the people at the coalface can uh, get information to the areas that matter to get change that, they, that we all want 
to improve the quality of healthcare in the organisation. We've set these meetings up on a Thursday morning. Initially they will be based in Darlington for, purely for logistic reasons, but from the autumn, hopefully from September, we'll be alternating between Durham and Darlington so that more colleagues can attend. If as a clinical lead or clinical director you can't attend, please do send one of your colleagues to represent the team. This isn't a hierarchical issue, this is purely about disseminating information both upwards and downwards so that we can all understand how we can improve things. Finally, thanks for listening to my second podcast. Uh, further information with regards to what I've said, especially about consent, will be available in the Medical Director's Bulletin and obviously there's a wealth of information about the uh, Montgomery case on the internet. Thanks again.